Welcome to this webinar on full field calibration using LSOPT 6. In this video, I will talk a little bit about the background to why we might need to use FFC, some selected parts of the theory behind the calibration, and also a demonstration of how to set up a problem from scratch in LSOPT. If we look at digital image correlation, which is the method to extract data from tests by using only image information, this technique has certain advantages. For instance, there is no need to mount strain gauges on test specimens, as these can be attached at any location on the specimens afterwards. DIC can also be applied to a variety of specimens, almost independent of size, geometry, material and deformation rate. The only thing required is that cameras can capture good quality images of the deformations. With DIC, we also get local deformation data, which might be crucial in fitting complex models consisting of many parameters. When extracting the deformation at many locations and points in time, you get something that we call multi-histories. Shown here is an example of the X-strain versus global specimen X-force, extracted for a grid of points as shown on the tensile specimen. To be able to extract multi-histories such as strains from the image data, a grid of facets is placed on the images. When the facets deform, a deformation tensor can be calculated. In LSOPT, there is a prepared interface to the GOM Correlate software. The reference length of the facets in this software changed in 2016, but I think that the important thing to be noted here is that the reference length is used in our specimen evaluations. One could argue that the simulation model should have a mesh size at least not too far from this reference length, if one is to expect to capture the same level of detail in the strain field. Now let's imagine that we have been able to extract the same multi-histories from our simulation model. What remains is to define the deviance between the test and the simulation curves. And in LSOPT we have these four options of measuring the deviance. We call them similarity measures. Independent of which similarity measure that is chosen, you could run into problems due to the properties of these measures but there are a number of guidelines that will help you to avoid most of the problems. My advices are filter your curves, use equal density of points on curves and compare the same ranges. For full field calibration, I also think that the dynamic time warping similarity measure is a good choice to start with. A final thing to regard before I start with the demonstration of the setup is the parameterization of the simulation input. Very often we want to calibrate curves that are used to describe hardening, strain rate dependency, failure and other things. We need to be able to change the shape of the curves in the optimization to find the optimal fit. Thus we parameterize the curve so that we can both generate different curves and also have some standard variables of flow type in our optimization. The curve parameterization and generation is commonly achieved in a preprocessor script. We at Dynamo have provided two examples of doing this, both which are available for downloading and modification to your needs. The first is based on the spline approach, which gives an arbitrary shape of a curve, and the second is based on a closed expression for the curve. In the demonstration that follows, we will use the second approach. Now to the demonstration of the setup in LSOPT. As we see here, we have three files. The first one contains the results from a GOM uh, RMS system. It's an XML file that contains the data. You can see that we have the displacement and the force from the machine as well as the Y strains and X strains from a certain area on a tensile specimen. 
The second file is the simulation file for Elsteiner, and the third file that is a Python script that generates the hardening curves according to the Hockett-Cherby equation I showed previously in this movie. Now we can launch a session of the LSOPT user interface. Only thing you need to give here is uh, the name for the file, LSOPT file. So we can start by defining the user-defined pre-processing stage where we created the hardening. We name this stage to hardening. It was a user-defined script, so we choose user-defined. And we give uh, execution command for Python. We browse for the input file. And let's say that we can run eight pre-processing jobs at the same time. So now in the top left corner, four parameters have appeared. It comes from the user script. These are by default constants. And we need to set these to continuous variables, enable to activate them in the optimization. And we also need to give reasonable start values and bound values for these variables. We continue by adding a stage for the simulation. We can call that stage simulation simply. And then we drag and drop to create the process flow that we would like to have. So that the simulation comes after the pre-processing. In the simulation uh, stage, we like to define the command for launching LSDyna. And uh, we do that on the cluster here. So let me just find the uh, uh, LSDyna solver that we would like to use. We copy that. We can run the job on eight cores, for instance. And then we need to point at the simulation input file as well. So we have a big cluster here. We can run eight jobs at the same time. We use the queuing system, which is PBS. Now we need to define the histories that we would like to extract from the simulations. Uh, the force, the global force in the tensile specimen is taken from a section force in Elsteina. So we need to remember the section ID, which is one in my simulation model, and I want to have the X force and no filtering is needed for this curve. Now it happens to be that I'm running the simulation in a different unit system. So in fact, what we really want to get the force is the force in the other direction and also a thousand times larger. We also need to define the multi-histories. Uh, both from the experiment and from the simulation. From the experiment, we import the file that contains the data. The XML file, we choose uh, the force as the X component, and then we should just use the X strain as the Y component of this plot. And of course, it should be the other way around like so. Now we can define also the corresponding simulation data, which is the um, strain in the x direction. And, uh, we use the same points as in the test data. We interpolate within the elements to get the correct values. 
And then also we need to create an alignment. It is very likely that your test data is not in the same coordinate system as your simulation model. We can view this in LS pre-post and see that the test data is not in the right region of the tensile specimen. So we need to create an alignment, but this is a very boring part. So let me just fast forward this part for you. And now we can view the alignment in LS Prepost once again to verify that we have done it correctly. That looks good, I think. We also need to cross plot the strains to the force data from the tensile specimen. When we do that under cross plot, so we get the force strain from the simulation. We select the strains and we select the force, like so. Now we only need to define the uh, similarity measure and that is done under responses, curve matching, multi-histories. We select the dynamic time warping and we select the test data as target and the computed force strains as uh, matching to the target. So now we only have a few steps left. Um, we need to set the objective of the, of the optimization and that is of course to minimize the curve matching error. We need to switch to a different type of task. We are doing an optimization where we are searching for a single optimum value and that is uh, the SRSM method that we should be using. Maybe we want to run it for at least 10 iterations. Finally, the uh, hardening pre-processing stage and the simulation stage are by default run in separate folders because they are different stages. But we would like to use the hardening curve that is created in the script in the simulation. So either we could use a file transfer by defining, uh, defining a file transfer between the stages. But the more simple option is to use run jobs in directory of another stage. So now we're running the pre-processing stage in the same folder as the simulation. And this should be everything. And uh, this should be the complete setup. So we go to run the project. And I recommend that we start with a baseline run to test the setup to see that everything is correctly defined. To look at the results, we start a viewer. And we can look at the simulation histories multi-point histories. Here are the simulation results and we can compare that with the experimental results. So this is the results after 20 iterations. Um, although we could have stopped much sooner looking at the uh, histories for the variables, we see that already after 10 iterations the values for the variables have more or less converged. This concludes the tutorial for full field calibration using LSOPT. Thank you for listening and please visit one of our channels to learn more.